Last date February 18, 2022. Russian US diplomacy stores with a shelled Ukrainian kindergarten a stark reminder of the lives at stake. On any other week, the high level diplomatic drama that unfolded in Moscow on Thursday should have been the main headline. But the images of a shelled kindergarten in eastern Ukraine shifted international focus to the Donbas region, where the world braced itself for signs that the simmering conflict there might escalate very seriously and catastrophically. Thankfully, the shell that hit the Stanitsha Luhanska school took no lives. But they were a reminder of the very real stakes for people living near the line of contact that separates Ukrainian government forces from Russian-backed separatists. For weeks, world leaders have been shuttling back and forth to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin and making high-level phone calls to try to put the brakes on a confrontation between Russia and the West over the Ukraine crisis. Yet in Moscow today, there's been no signs of a breakthrough, but a clear ratcheting up of tension. On Thursday afternoon local time, US Ambassador to Russia John Sullivan paid a visit to the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he received a long-awaited response from the Russian government to a written document delivered to Russia three weeks earlier. The document made clear that the Russians laid full blame on the US and its allies for stoking the Ukraine crisis, even as evidence continues to mount of that as many as 150,000 Russian troops are arrayed around Ukraine's borders. There is no plan for a Russian invasion of Ukraine, as the US and its allies have been alleging at the official level since last autumn, the document, released by Russian state news agency RIA Novosti said. Therefore, claims about Russian culpability for the escalation cannot be interpreted as anything other than an attempt to pressure and devalue Russian offers of security guarantees. At about the same time, the U.S. State Department confirmed Russia had expelled the second most senior diplomat at the U.S. diplomatic mission in Moscow, a move that U.S. President Joe Biden's administration called an escalatory step. That escalation has clearly been incremental. A senior State Department official said that Bart Gorman, the U.S. Deputy Chief of Mission in Moscow, was formally expelled by Moscow earlier this year, given two weeks to depart, and left Moscow last week. So where does that leave diplomacy? It's still not entirely dead. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met on Thursday with his Italian counterpart, Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio. Lavrov essentially laid out the same complaint that was in the written reply delivered to the U.S. The Americans and NATO have ignored Russia's core security concerns, he said, and none of the secondary issues on the technical details of arms control, for instance, can be resolved until we agree on our key positions. And on those key positions, particularly regarding the issue of who can join NATO Russia and the West remain very very far apart. Separatists in eastern Ukraine order mass evacuation as Ukraine warns of Russian provocation. Pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine's breakaway regions ordered the evacuation of civilians to Russia Friday, accusing Ukraine of planning a large military offensive against the two self-declared republics. The rest of eastern part of the country has witnessed the worst shelling in years over the last two days. Ukraine Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov said Friday that shelling of Ukraine territory from areas controlled by separatists had risen dramatically in the past day. Each side accuses the other of heavy shelling of civilian areas. Ukrainian authorities say there were 60 breaches of the ceasefire Thursday, many of them by heavy weapons. The Ukrainian government denies that it is planning any offensive in the east, accusing the separatists of launching a disinformation campaign. Authorities in the breakaway states of Donetsk and Luhansk said they were organizing the evacuations. Leonid Pesechnik, the most senior official in the pro-Russian breakaway Luhansk People's Republic, urged men to take up arms. The Russian Federation is ready to provide organized reception and accommodation on its territory of residents of the Luhansk People's Republic, said Pesechnik. Once again, I appeal to all men who are able to hold weapons in their hands to defend their land. The Ukrainians accuse separatists of staging attack in breakaway city. On Friday, a vehicle explosion in Donetsk was dismissed by Ukraine and U.S. officials as a staged attack designed to stoke tensions in eastern Ukraine. Video showed a fire in a parking lot and a badly damaged military vehicle near the headquarters of the self-declared Donetsk People's Republic. Images and video showed emergency services at the scene and a badly damaged vehicle identified by CNN as a Russian-made jeep. There's no way to verify what caused the damage to the vehicle or the fire. We think that this is a staging and a provocation, Anton Jurishchenko, advisor to the Ukrainian Interior Minister, told CNN on WhatsApp. A U.S. State Department spokesman described it as a false flag operation and said incidents like the vehicle explosion and calls from separatist leaders to evacuate because of alleged Ukrainian aggression represented further attempts to obscure through lies and disinformation that Russia is the aggressor in this conflict. U.S. President Joe Biden has said that there has been an uptick in Russian disinformation that could be used as a pretext for an invasion into Ukraine. Speaking at the White House on Friday, Biden said that he was convinced Putin has made the decision to invade Ukraine, but added that diplomacy is always a possibility. 
Biden said reports pushed to the Russian public that Ukraine is planning to launch an attack in separatist-controlled Donbas lacked evidence. He said those claims defied logic. All of these are consistent with the playbook the Russians have used before, Biden said. He added, this is also in line with the pretext scenario that the United States and our allies and partners have been warning about for weeks. Both the Ukrainian government and Western officials have warned of the possibility of provocative actions by Russia and the separatist leadership to provide a pretext for a Russian offensive into Ukraine. We are in the most dangerous phase, a Western official told reporters Friday. They could move at any time. Russia could act within days. Everything we are seeing makes us more concerned about that. The official said there are 110 Russian battalion tactical groups, a fighting formation that normally comprises about 1,000 troops around Ukraine. Russia also has air power ready to go, the official added. Both the Ukrainian government and Western officials have warned of the possibility of provocative actions by Russia and the separatist leadership to provide a pretext for a Russian offensive into Ukraine. The Donbas region has seen fighting between Ukrainian forces and separatist fighters since 2014. The Ukrainian government in Kyiv asserts the Donetsk People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic are in effect Russian occupied. The self declared republics are not recognized by any government, including Russia. The Ukrainian government refuses to talk directly with either separatist republic. Russian President Vladimir Putin has distributed around 600,000 Russian passports to inhabitants of breakaway regions in recent years, a move that observers have argued could set the stage for a Russian intervention in Ukraine. More than 14,000 people have died in the conflict in Donbas since 2014. Ukraine says 1.5 million people have been forced to flee their homes, with most staying in the areas of Donbas that remain under Ukrainian control, and about 200,000 resettling in the wider Kyiv region. The Russian invasion of Ukraine would be catastrophic, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said Friday during his opening remarks at the Munich Security Conference in Germany, calling for diplomatic efforts to continue. I am deeply concerned about heightened tensions and increased speculation about a military conflict in Europe. I still think it will not happen, but, if it did, it would be catastrophic, Guterres said. The US Vice President Kamala Harris from the Munich conference warned that aggressive action by Russia would be met with severe consequences of economic sanctions. Biden administration officials have privately urged Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky not to leave Ukraine and visit Munich on Saturday given concerns about a possible incursion, according to three US officials and one senior Ukrainian official. Some US officials are concerned that if he leaves the country, that could open the door for Russia to make false claims that he has fled. While officials haven't explicitly asked Zelensky not to make the trip and have been careful to make clear it's up to him, those concerns have been communicated, one of the officials said. The latest US intelligence assessment indicates that Russia is continuing with preparations to invade Ukraine, according to a senior US official with direct knowledge and another source directly familiar with the intelligence. The assessment, described as bleak by the senior official, indicates Russia could attack in the coming days. Earlier assessments forecasting military action by Russia this week did not bear out. Thank you for watching our videos every day. Dash daily news. Dash hot new. Dash breaking news. Dash global news. Dash new events etc.